Hi guys, um, it's like midnight right now, um, and it's the first time that I've had my iPod charged for like a month, um, I didn't have a cord for it or I lost it, um, but I found one today and charged up, so now here we are. Um, I've been trying to just do more stuff, and this is stuff to do. Um, I, um, uh, made a, today I used Periscope for the first time. It's this, um, it's this app. I'm sure you know what it is. You take your phone and you can live stream with it. I was trying to use it to live stream a drawing that I was doing for a flyer. And it kept freezing on me. Um, so I'm going to have to troubleshoot that a little bit. But it was pretty cool. I feel like I was more into drawing when there was like some other reason to do it other than just drawing. Um, I've been talking lately with people about the idea of, like, people talk about doing art for art's sake and how you should just be comfortable with that. Um, but nobody ever really knows how hard that is to do until the only reason that you have to do art is just to make it. Um, because there's always... Like, we always make art to show other people, or, like, write music to show other people, or do anything to show other people. And, um, making art for art's sake, when you're doing all of those things, or being involved in a community, is, it's easy. Um, but then when you don't have that anymore, um, I mean, I personally have a hard time. I can't, I haven't quite figured out how to hermit and just kind of like work on stuff that I want to work on. Um, that's sort of like a, a weird journey that I'm going on right now. Um, because I've probably every two months I just like delete, not delete, but deactivate all of my social media. Um, so I can take a break from everything. And then while I'm doing that, I'm like, oh, well, like, how do I do this now? Like, how do, like, what, what is the point of, of making, like, a song if I'm not playing it for anybody? Um, and I think I'm getting there. I have, like, I get really sad about it once in a while, but then sometimes I feel really empowered by it, so... It's all different stuff. But anyways, today I made, um, I made a show flyer, and, um, I don't have it here, but I'll link to it, um, in the, in the comments. I mean, it's, it's across the room in my scanner, so I could go and get it, but I won't, because I'm pretty comfy in my seat, and it's midnight, and I'm tired and kind of falling asleep. Um, but I... I thought I would talk a little bit about how I make flyers, um, cause coming up with the content for like what's gonna be in the actual flyer used to be difficult for me. Um, I used to draw a lot of kind of just anime characters or whatever and make a flyer out of it and be like, go see this band. Um, but now what I do is. There's a there's an older bookstore nearby. It's a couple towns over, um, and I found this. Um, it's backwards. I don't know if it's backwards. I keep forgetting. Anyways, it's the the dictionary of symbols, and it's just this whole encyclopedia that has all of these symbols um, and like what they mean in different cultures and. Lots of spooky, like, 
witchcraft stuff and like western mysticism and eastern mysticism and like all sorts of different things um it's really cool it's alphabetical um and what i do is i have a million dice because i'm a dungeons and dragons geek and i take the dice and i just roll them and then see i got Three forty-three. So I take this book and I turn it to page three forty-three. So take your textbooks and uh, it's in the T's. And I can see what's so. There's a couple symbols. There's either tiger or time um, so I would take one of those or both thunderbolt is here for two and that's pretty cool so thunderbolt is kind of what sticks out to me I think um, and I do that two more times so I would take I would take a, a number and you know look it up and be like uh, the moon and look it up and be like oh the promised land um, so it'd be like uh, Thunderbolt and the Moon and the Promised Land, and that's like a cool combination. So I'm gonna probably write that down. I don't have to write it down. It's in the it's in the video that keeps track of it. And I'd say like, cool, like this is what's gonna be in the picture, and I kind of draw it and use like sigils, which you can find in my other videos, um, or all over the internet, um, and then make a flyer. And there's usually some kind of intent based in it. Um, to be honest, the intent is usually like, go to the show, don't stay home. Um, but sometimes I get a little bit less selfish about it and make something that I think will help. Um, so that's how I make show flyers. Um, it's lots of fun and it helps it helps for art in general to have some kind of direction like that that's like randomized and kind of like it's from like I guess if you can find a book that you think is cool that has source material in it that is cool then you know that you're starting from like a pool that is already like from that book like I have a pool that I know everything in there is going to be something that I'm going to want to draw or that I can find meaning in um, and then instead of, like, racking my brain and, um, kind of falling under normal biases, I can just, uh, you know, have the wind decide for me or something. Um, I have some other cool books here that I got. Um, I got this from the same store. It's, um, personal mythology. Once again, I'm sorry if this is all reversed. Um, it's, um, it's a whole, it's a book on personal mythology. I like, I like a lot of stuff in it. Um, I don't, it's not that I don't like stuff in it, it's more that some of the stuff I'm just like, it feels a little outdated. I'm not really sure when it. When it um was made. It was it was kind of like this person um was working on the sort of the work of Joseph Campbell in like mythology and narrative and the hero cycle and uh just wrote this book that turns it like the hero cycle into kind of a um like a workbook like about personal personal narrative and personal work um i do like that somebody owned this before me and so stuff is like outlined in it and that's pretty cool um i mainly liked it because when i was looking for when i was at this bookstore i was kind of in the process of deciding 
what I wanted, like, what I do for people as far as tarot readings goes, what I want to call that, um, because I don't feel comfortable calling myself, like, a healer, um, because I feel like people heal themselves, like, I don't heal them, um, and I don't, I don't feel comfortable with, like, intuitive reader, um, or, like, any of those labels that people use, um, but I kind of, like, was going through my head, and I thought, I, I thought the term, uh, narrative architecture was really cool, um, which is also the name of the deck that I'm slowly designing over the next five years, um, but I thought narrative architecture, that's something that I can get behind, and then this personal mythology book, um, showed up, and I was like, mm, okay, well, that's cool, like, like, I don't know what I'll end up getting out of this book, but that was, that's, that's a sweet thing to happen. Um, and I got this book called The Imprisoned Splendor. Um, I'm 100% not sure what this is about, um, it's really hard to read because the text is so small. I think I want to get a another copy of it that has larger text because I think that is the problem that I have is when text is really small, it gives me a headache and I can't I can't read like even just looking at these pages it hurts, it hurts me. Um, but it also just like looks really cool. Like I really like um, these little diagrams. I just like diagrams and like whenever there's like a spooky book that talks about spirit stuff that has some kind of scientific, like, like pseudo-scientific diagram. It's really, that's really cool. Actually, now that I'm looking at this book, I'm much more interested in it. Um, but I, I got it because the title, again, was important to me. Um, a friend of mine did a, um, a, astrology reading for me, um, that kind of talked about, I'm a Leo, and, like, Leo's a fire sign, and all my fire signs are basically all clustered together in this place called the Twelfth House, um, which is, like, a, a prison, basically. Um, I have a very, sm like, little, small understanding of astrology, but she wrote me the most amazing kind of two paragraphs about it that was, like, kind of sad, but also empowering at the same time, um, so, this book is called The Imprisoned Splendor, and it's kind of, like, you know, it's in prison, light, it just made sense, so, someday I hope that I can, um, overcome my problems and read this, I just need new glasses, that's the problem, um, and... Um, I ordered this online, um, uh, there's this author who's, who's more, I mean, this is, like, a newer book, I think, than the others that I've shown you so far. Um, this is a book that's all about Neptune, um, and it's about sort of water deities and how a lot of... Neptune is really interesting to me, um, I'm kind of on this, like, journey of self-discovery with whatever that is, um, I've never been really connected to, like, a god, or god, or, like, a goddess, or any deity like that, um, but I did sort of an exercise where... The exercise was to, like, give names to your, like, higher and mid and lower self so that you can, you can call them up. It's like a spirit work kind of thing, and you can invoke them. Um, and Neptune is the name I got from my higher self. And when I did that, I just kind of, like, put it away and didn't really think about it too much. 
I just, I just did, like, the meditation, and then wrote stuff down, and then put it away for a couple of months, and then, um, I just started, like, getting, thinking about it more, and talking to people, and they were like, have you ever worked with anybody before, and I was like, no, um, I think that there was this leftover piece of me that was still this, like, anarchist, like, pagan teenager that was just, like, oh, it was, like, very rebellious punk thing where it's, like, I don't need any, anything, like, um, like, I'm anti-authority, so, like, gods don't make sense to me, um, but, I don't know, I'm a little, I've evolved since I was 19, obviously, um, so I've been thinking about it a lot, and I've been having a lot of experiences with, like, water and growth, um, and also this whole idea about, like, being a fire sign for my whole life, and also, like, traveling and being really ambitious for my whole life, and now I am, like, at rest and, like, discovering things about my emotions, um, and that's, like, a very water thing, so this search for, like, the Neptune in me has, is, like, really helpful for, being centered and like being calm and being grateful and being happy and content um and also Neptune is just really interesting as far as like energies and like gender stuff goes um Neptune and like Poseidon are kind of like very similar or the same in like Roman and Greek mythology and they're both depicted as these like big masculine big chested bearded like manly men of the sea um and i mean that's not something i get down with um i don't really care um but then water is sort of always like looked at as sort of like this like life-giving um sort of like intuitive uh, spiritual feminine kind of energy so it's very interesting that that kind of those two contrasts exist um, so this book has been fun to read um, because I mean it, it it's called um, the astrological Neptune by Liz Green and um, it's fun to read especially the first chapter because it it goes through all of these water gods from like like very long ago cultures um and they all sort of meld together in different ways and it talks a lot about like how these cultures like met and like traded with each other and invaded each other and how that affected sort of like how these gods evolved into each other and how like because, like, in every other culture, water gods are these, like, sort of, they're these serpents who basically gave life to the universe and are, are usually mothers, and either mothers or, like, agender, um, meaning, like, non-gendered or non-binary. And, um, and usually also very, like, at least, like, coded as queer, um, so it's been really cool to, um, I don't know, to see all of that, um, and I identify with a lot of it, and also this book just looks cool, like, it's, it just has the thing in the front, it's just, it's great, um, there's some stuff in it that I don't know how I feel about, um, there's sort of this, like, repeated sort of thing about how, like, the energy of Neptune is also, like, very defeatist, and, um, sort of just, like, there's a lot of issues with, like, um, like, I guess, like, the op, like, not, people talk about, like, daddy issues, but, like, a lot of this book, it seems to be about, like, mother issues that people will have, and there's, like, Freud and stuff, and I don't know how I feel about it, I need to, like, read more about it, I can't talk about it too much, because, it's very academic. It's super, like, I have a hard, like, I can only get through 10 pages at a time. Um, and those 10 pages are either, like, super stocked with, like, awesome mythology stuff that I love to read and, like, cool astrological stuff. Um, or the 10 pages will be about 
how, like, um, about, like, the martyrdom and, like, like, martyrdom and, like, returning to the womb and, like, all this other stuff, um, and, like, I don't, and sometimes that's hard for me to read through because I'm like, okay, I get it, like, yeah, we can move on, um, but the book is great and, um, Liz Green is a really great, a really great writer, um, and I'm only, I'm only, like, this far through the book, meaning this is what I've read, um, and I got this book, like, a few months ago, um, so, it's not an easy read for me, um, but it's worth it to me, and once again, you get charts, and charts and graphs are cool, and stuff like that, um, this was really handy to have, I went recently to get Reiki certified, I am Reiki certified now, um, so if anybody wants Reiki, give me a call, um, and I knew that I was in the right place because I w it was in Rhode Island, and it was, like, in this town where there's just water and boats everywhere, and, um, whenever I'm, like, feeling spiritual, um, I can, like, smell salt, like, sea, like, salt water, no matter where I am. Like, I live in Western Mass, and there's no water, like, anywhere, and sometimes I'll just go outside and be like, okay, it's that kind of day. Um, but I went, and, um, part of doing your Reiki training is meeting, like, people have guides, like, that's part of Reiki culture, um, which, when I was going into it, I was like, this is not for me, because, like, solo, solo person, you know, um, but then we went on this, like, guided meditation kind of walk, uh, and it was incredible, um, I had been kind of, like, searching for what Neptune meant to me, whether Neptune was, like, God that I was supposed to, like, connect with, or just an energy, or, like, I didn't really know what, and I was kind of, like, getting, I was, like, I was looking, so, um, when, then when we did this, this thing to, like, find out, kind of reach our guides, um, it was, it was this pretty amazing, like, vivid, um, sort of vision I had where, um, I was, I was walking up, if you can imagine a, um, like a big great fire escape that's all made out of black metal, black metal, um, and it has, uh, it had, like, moss on it, and it, it just kept going up like, from out of the middle of the ocean, and I would, I walked up it, and it was, like, I could feel it, like, sort of waving, like, back and forth, and, like, the moaning of the metal, and it was, um, it was really windy and rainy, um, but it wasn't, like, scary or anything like that, it was just windy and rainy in the middle of the ocean on this, like, weird fire escape that was extending out of the water and I got to the top of it and I like kind of got to stand on top of it for a few minutes just like looking out over the water and it was night um and then the um the fire escape at the very top of it <coughs> um met up with sort of this island that was like kind of a rocky mountainous um, it wasn't mountainous, it wasn't really tall, but it was just kind of this rocky island in the middle of the ocean, and, um, I walked down it, down this, like, red brick road, um, and got to a gate and went inside, and there was a, there was a lighthouse, and, um, it was just this big, like, white and silver bricked building, um, with, like, a light going around in the middle of it, and, um, I asked the lighthouse if it was my guide, and the light just, like, shined straight at me, 
and I knew that it was. Um, and I don't know, that, I like don't know what that really means, but to me that was kind of like my search for what, like, my search for a connection um, and with, with like Neptune being the carrot uh, led me to that. Um, so now I know that that is, like, that tower is connected to me. It's the, the light, I call it the light tower. And, um, it, uh, and it's cool. Um, and it, it kind of connects back to, like, the whole, like, all of my signs being in the 12th house, where it's not a lighthouse, it's a tower. And, um there's kind of all of this really bright stuff that's, like, trapped inside of it down at the bottom, but, like, the light of it still shines up through the tower and, like, leaves out through the window to make it look like a lighthouse. Um, and I don't really know what that metaphor means to me yet, but it's, like, kind of nice to have and comforting in a way. Um, and it was really cool. Um, and I don't, I don't know... I don't think that, like, my, my Neptunian search is, like, over, um, but I'm pretty comfortable with what I have right now, um, and I think that's it. Uh, this video is almost reaching a half an hour now, um, so I'm gonna stop because I started at midnight, um, and it's late, uh, that's it. Um, if you want to talk to me about anything, just get in touch. And if I don't feel like talking, I won't. But if I do, I will. Um, if you want a tarot reading or Reiki stuff, just get in touch. Um, I do that for money. And um, I have a Patreon if you want to, whatever. It's too late for me to advertise anything I do. So...